Today, um, I'm going to talk about uh, refactoring done to the vectorizer to so-called vectorize with SLP only, whatever that means. And so, at first, I want to just introduce what is SLP. So, classically, SLP is the super word level parallelism. For example, in the code above, let me see if that somehow... Point R. Yeah. Here you see uh, two lines of code where there is an obvious possibility of executing the two statements in, in one statement using vectors, right? So that's why it's called super level word par parallelism. Uh, these kind of opportunities, they can happen with in loops or also with out loops in uh, straight line code. And when you do loop vectorization, you usually need to apply the unrolling that's done implicit by vectorization in addition to exploiting this kind of super word level parallelism. For example, for this case, if your vector has four elements, then you need to duplicate those two statements once to get all your lanes in the vector field. And when you exploit this during vectorization, you're usually doing that to limit the amount of unrolling you need to do to fill the vector. Because, as I will show in the next example, here you have a quite simple loop. I made, made it awkward on purpose, so there is, of course, uh, so there is a super world level parallelism uh, by means of this struct having the members adjacent in memory, so you can, in principle, load uh, the, the data as vectors and operate on that with the same operation, and in this case, even with the same scalar loop invariant uh, variable. Uh, what is awkward in this example is that we have three of them. That's not power of two. Power of two is always nice to compile us, not power of three is bad to compile us. Um, so what do you want to do? In Gimple, it looks like this. Uh, I marked in red the important parts of the loop body, which is only shown. So there's a block with a jump down here, and above here there's a different basic block with the pre-header and stuff like that. But the important part is this, where you see the three loads of the RGB elements and the three stores of the RGB elements and three times a multiplication. Um, then this depicts the SSA graph, or some SSA graph uh, of the example, which shows that there are really three independent uh, bits, namely those that we can later execute in parallel uh, with a load, a multiplication, and a store to the separate elements. So now I will show, don't be confused. So I, I, I was very bad at doing slides. You see, I, I wrote them, uh, did circles manually, and I didn't get to trying to make this with transitions and stuff like that. I tried to make AI generate my slides, but I didn't succeed. <laughs> I tried to. <laughs> they, they, they all tell me, oh, I can't visualize graphs yet. It's too bad. Uh, so, I now took the three loads uh, here, one, two, three. I, so, uh, this is basically the SSL graph from uh, two slides before. And I have applied unrolling and duplicated the statements. And it's supposed to be n times, because without SLP, we need um, as many elements to fill a vector, for example, four, right? So, uh, and what we can then do without SLP is we can load the, of the, of the first set of statements, the memory in one vector. Actually, we have to spill over to the next statement to fill the vector, but we are basically loading memory in this direction but then we are forming vectors out of all the R elements, because we can, that we have basically vectorized the first statement separately as if the others weren't there. 
then we, we are doing the multiplication. That's just a regular Vegas vector statement. But when we are doing the store, we are again, we are now taking the vector result, which is basically a vector, uh, a vertical vector, so-called. But now we are uh, trying to store the elements again into the R elements, which are also in, have a representation that's uh, in memory with a horizontal vector. So basically, for the classical vectorization, you need to transpose your vectors all the time if you run into this kind of situation where the memory locations you want to uh, work on are not consecutive in memory. Or you can use Gaza. GCN, Gaza. Everything is Gaza. No, it's just not. It's not. <laughs> well, with GCN, everything is Gaza. Yeah, right. Um, so. Um, so there are architectures that, that can basically do this transposition as part of a complex load instruction, struct load for RISC V or load lanes for ARM, for example. I think those are the only two that GCC has implementations for these kind of instructions. So x86 can't do this. The transposition as part of the load, basically. So when you do this on x86, you get this. I, so I, I had to explicitly disable SAP in the vectorizer to get that code, of course. So you get uh, three nice vector loads, perfect. Then you get lots of shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. That's the transposition. And somewhere there's the first multiplication, there's the second, and there's the third. And then you get, again, shuffles, lots of shuffles, and the source. Of course, I cheated. I only enabled SSE2, which needs many more ex instructions for the shuffle than if you enable later ISAs, but <laughs> I wanted to show bad code, so. <laughs> so with SAP, <laughs> you see, I got really creative when doing the slides. So now you have to turn your heads this way. So that's the, the, the very same thing. Basically, the statements are of the R G B now now the, the it, they are still horizontally for the R G B, but the the statement the statements of the different SSA work sets are now vertical, so that I could draw nice uh, circles. Right? So, so we we still load the memory in a linear fashion with a horizontal vector now. And what we now do is we basically combine the, the, the arithmetic also into a single vector. So we are not splitting the three statements into separate vectors, but treat it as a single vector. That, of course, only works because all are multiplications. If one of those would have been an add, then, well, it, it breaks down. But we now have all nice horizontal vectors, and we get nice code generation. Wow. Right, it's uh, shorter. Shorter is always better. We know that from Risk V. <laughs> <laughs> so QEMO would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you know what SLP is in a classical sense: super word level parallelism. It's nice to exploit. Uh, so in GCC, we can we can. Uh, exploit this super word level parallelism both in, in loop context, but we also use the same mechanism to vectorize straight line code. That, of course, only works when there are enough statements to fill a vector because we can't unroll the straight line code. We don't want to duplicate work. Um, but in GCC, in the vectorizer, all these SLP handling is handled by different data structures. And uh, for uh, non-SLP, we have one separate struct that has information per GIMPL statement. And with SLP, we also have data structures that basically represent a collection of statements, right? The super word, basically. And there's uh, a, a, another data structure that basically tells us where this kind of uh, graph of a sequence 
of uh, the super words starts, basically the graph entries or the, 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 the representing data structure for the graph of these nodes. So here I'm showing example of a SLP graph. So you can see for each SLP node, we have the set of scalar statements that is covered by the super word. In this case, uh, the loads, the multiplications, and the stores. For each of the statements, we have this other kind of data structure, the statement vec info. And then we have a single SLP instance that points to the starting super word, which is always the sync on the GCC side. So you could build a graph on both sides, but we are building it from the sinks. And then we also have a SLP node for this invariant. So basically, the, the graph of the SLP nodes is something like the SSA graph. So for each, for each vector, you have the defining SLP node. And also for the invariants, you have a defining SLP node which in this case just has the SSA defs and not a statement because well, the, it's an invariant. It was a function parameter in the example. So now what's, what's all the issue we had now with, with SLP and not SLP? Um, the vectorizer can actually mis mix that in, in a single loop. So if you have super word level parallelism opportunities and regular accesses that are just single statements, it can just handle that fine. The, the, usually the single statements determine the unroll factor you have to apply, or rather the, the, the statements that operate on the smallest data type in case you have an ISA that has a fixed vector size because then you need the, the most lanes for the smallest data type. And um, so when you have a mix of both, then it can happen that a statement is part of both a super word level parallelism opportunity, but also uh, feeds into, for example, a store that is on its, on its own and it doesn't have any SLP thing. So that's the statement gets vectorized twice. Once as classical vector with the interleaving and swapping and once with SLP, and that's called a hybrid SLP mode. This, there's a lot of complex code in the vectorizer that just deals with this speciality, and it's, I think I've written it three times, and it's probably still wrong, um, and it would be nice to scrap that. Um, then I've, I've uh, told you that there are some targets that can, that can do load and store lanes, or struct store, struct load, um, but we couldn't do this with SLP. And if you wanted to use load or store lanes, you had to scrap all SLP opportunities and restart without doing SLP. So we do, we do this kind of heuristically. We look at all the loads and stores and see are there enough opportunities that it's worth to scrap everything or not. And yeah, I have to think about how to do that with Risk Five, given that we don't know if the struct stores or loads are fast or not. We'll see. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit awkward. Um, uh, then there are, uh, so I've shown you uh, SLP opportunity with a store as a sync, but there are also SLP opportunities when you have a chain of reductions. So basically you have a reduction in the loop, but you add five different things to it inside of the loop. Then you can eventually seed the computations of those things you add as part of a super word level parallelism. That's then called uh, SLP reduction chain, because the SLP reduction is if you SLP two reductions. Well, but that's, uh, that's going to stay, so good to know. <laughs> right? Uh, and if, if any of that doesn't work, then we have to basically tear that apart to be able to vectorize it with the non-SLP vectorization. And uh, what also happened still in GCC 14 is that when you think you have a SLP opportunity at the store sync, but <clears throat> it doesn't really work for all lines, 
then we split the store group, uh, but at that point, we, we were losing all the analysis we've done for the data references, because we now have two independent groups. And if we then fail the SLP, that will confuse the classical vectorization. I, I don't remember seeing a bug really running into this, but it should be there. So I've, I've now fixed that, so we are no longer tuning this apart. So <coughs> this is what the talk is about in the end. The goal is to only do SLP. Well, you, now you say, well, but if there isn't any super word I can explore, well, why do I want to do SLP? No, I only want to use the data structure because I want to use the same data structures for every kind of vectorization in the vectorizer. So basically, we'll have super words of size one. Why not? Why not? You're trying to unify your data structure. Yeah, I'm right. So that's that's what the first line says. Yeah, unify the data structures because. Uh, so and we use the single, the single group size, and what what allows us to do is that we can remove duplicate code because it is indeed the case that when you have a SLP, the, the routines like, for example, vectorizing a reduction has a lot of code for the SLP case and exactly the same code for the non-SLP case. <clears throat> uh, of course, not exactly because they differ in features they can handle which is kind of, yeah, bad, right? So it, it, when we unify the data structures, it drives all the feature parity between those two schemes. And we are running into the situation that for the classical vectorization, where, where we only have the per gimple statement metadata, that this limits us in ways we can, for example, <clears throat> generate code of in, in more complex settings. For example, with the SLP approach, we have pattern matching uh, that only works when you look at two lanes, right, for, for complex ops like swizzle and rotate and stuff like that. Or uh, we, we, the, the vectorizer does pattern matching on the scalar code before the vector analysis, basically when there is a multiplication by a constant uh, and the ISA cannot do multiplication, then we can do this with shifts and adds. <coughs> and what we are doing right now, we are, we are creating gimbal statements that are not actually in the IL. And then because we need this, this meta info for the statement, and we need to know that we are vectorizing a shift and add and not the multiplication. And then you find code in the vectorizer that uh, tries to walk over all SSA operands twice, once with the SSA operand scanner and once with walk gimbal statement because those don't have statement operands. Right. So if we were using SLP, we could just add another SLP node. And we don't actually need the per statement info in that case for the node, because there's also no real SSA name for the definition of this of the shift result in the scalar IL. So it's not really necessary to to track a gimbal statement when we when the, the the value of the vector lane is not in the scalar code. You need to track the operation you want to do and the operands, but you don't need to track a real gimbal statement. Oh, I have to. And as you say, it allows you to disassociate your vectorization from the underlying gimbal yeah. representation. So, um, I, I think I've been working on this for six years, or basically I started first time six years ago, then three years ago, and now I have started again, and I hope that I can finish it this time. So I, I've, I've added SLP support where it was missing, because as I said, we have two code paths and lazy people implement one and don't implement the other, right? Why not? Because who will ever have a SLP, a true SLP opportunity for weird operation X? I mean, you can write a test case. 
but yeah. So, and of course, if you treat now every statement as a, as a P opportunity with group size one, well, you need to implement it. So I've implemented that over the previous attempts and the end of last year, a lot of those mostly in condition vectorization because nobody would ever have a true SLP opportunity there in real code uh, for OpenMP and, and more cases. Basically, you disable the, the classical vectorization and see what test cases fail. And then you chase them down, all, the, all of them. You try, right? So, and now in the, in the last two months, I've put to trunk actual use of these single lane SLP vectorization. So before, we've never would uh, recognize the, the super world level parallelism opportunity for a single lane but because it's not there, right? But now I'm trying to enforce it so when it works, use it to iron out the bugs and stuff like that. So um, basically we are now doing the SLP discovery because you can, yeah, at the moment, it's basically a greedy process. You have roots, like for example, a series of stores that you've analyzed are continuous or with, with some gaps. And then you start a greedy discovery. Do the lanes all have the same operation all the time? Because when they don't have the same operation, you can't SLP, right? Uh, so I, I've added question. You could SLP if you could insert a select. Yeah, we are actually... It's a static operation, so you can select between two, two possible values. There's a limit, obviously, but... Uh, we, we, we are doing this for, for adds and subtracts, yeah. So, yeah, so that's... But SLP discovery is a whole separate topic, so just take it as magic, which it is, kind of. So I've added a discovery from routes that we didn't previously dis, uh, consider. For example, a single store, or a single life induction variable, or stuff like that. So, and, and I think we've now covered all routes, and we do discovery, and we try to vectorize it that way. But of course, some SLP opportunities still fail, uh, especially in the area of variable lengths like vectors. And so sometimes even the discovery fails, but I think I also fixed most cases. And we, yeah. So in, in principle, the, the single lane SLP discovery is just rewriting the SSA graph to a SLP graph, but it still goes through the multi-lane discovery routines, which have various checks that are in theory not necessary for the single lane, because we later verify if we can actually vectorize it but I still done because it's, it was simple. <clears throat> so, but now we get to the loads and stores and to my initial example, right? So when you have just um, a single lane load and, and you have a non-continuous access. That's a case the, the classical vectorizer would have handled similar as to I showed in the example, like it would load continuous and then swizzle the lanes or use the load lanes and throw away one or two of the vectors that it loaded. Or on risk five, you could straight load and then compress away the, the elements you are not interested in. So um, I had to somehow make the SLP work for load lanes and store lanes because some ISAs want that. And the original idea of the refactoring was to get exactly the same code in and out because it's just data structure change, right? Well, yeah, wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, of course. <laughs> so I, I tried to replicate most of the quirks we had with the interaction between SLP and non-SLP, because only then you can get exactly the same code back. And the first hurdle was to, to implement the load lane and store lane thing. Um, 
There is now a representation for that. You can look it up in, I think, a series of attempts I made on, on the mailing list, how it exactly looks like. It, it, it looks a bit unnatural, but I wanted to change the code generation part as little as possible. So eventually we will make the representation nicer. Um, plus, the, the current way the, the interleaving support works in the classical vectorizer is that basically the, the, the first statement does all the loads and all the permutations, and the, the next statement, so the, the load of the B and the G, when that gets vectorized, it just looks up the correct statement in a magical on the side way, right? And that's now done explicitly. So you have a proper SLP node that does the continuous load, and then you have, to have explicit swizzle operations that extract the elements as needed. Um, so, and um, the, the classical vectorizer supports power of two, sizes of the groups, and the size of three, because this pre outlined interleaving thing is basically hard coded, right? Yeah. And so I, I basically, I try to implement that one to one, but I also try to implement it in a way that is uh, not tied to a specific vector length because we are at the moment doing this before the vector length is supposed to be determined. It's already determined, but it's not supposed to stay that way. Right, so I have to uh, take it from a more generic point. So we generate different code at the moment, and there are still some gaps that the previous SLP code would have handled magically because the target can do weird permutations, and my generic variable le vector length supporting scheme doesn't support all of the cases yet. So, but the, but the main good changes are that those store groups are no longer split up. So we basically preserve the important information for vectorizing the store. Um, we are loading all of those groups first as a whole and, and unpermuted. That also allows us to share that load between different swizzlings of the same loads, which we didn't before. Um, and then they are permuted. When they are permuted without load lanes, you have the explicit swizzles. When you have load lanes, you have a flag on the node that says, I'm load lanes. And you get uh, magic permutes after that, that are basically the look up the thing and take it, and the load lanes will make sure that it will generate load lanes and nothing else. So it's a fixed decision, but it was before. So it should be really a more dynamic decision, but yeah, we have to work on that as follow-up. Let me check. Good in time. So what are the remaining bits? So on x86, it's not too bad. There are a lot of early break vectorization fails, but I heard it's fixed, basically. <laughs> Almost fixed because, well, Tamar was also lazy and only added non SLP for <laughs> early break. Um, and then there is quite a few test cases which have the GOMP simplane in the IL. They are mostly, I think, only from some weird OpenMP scan pragma thing that I don't really understand what it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jakob implemented the, the non SLP version, so I'm hoping he will find time to implement the SLP or explain to me what it's supposed to do. <laughs> I love both. Um, then there are SLP load permutations when they are not of power two sides and not of size three. Like, those are the cases. <laughs> Six is basically power of two times. <laughs> Yeah, 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 six, ah, five. It's, uh, five, so, yeah. So, um, so they basically, when the vectorizer sees one of these swiveling nodes, it can generate code, but only if it has at most two inputs. 
but you can imagine the permutations where you suddenly need three. And then it says, well, I don't want to do this. And we've resisted so far fixing up that routine to then, well, make it work with more statements. And I'm trying to keep to that. Uh, so I, I have to kind of try to make those work even without fixing, knowing how many lanes I have. Because I, only when I know how many lanes I have, do I know whether I will run into that situation with the three vectors or not, right? Or with the VLA, I'm, I'm lost anyway, <laughs> kind of. VLA is a Yeah, yeah. So I have some ideas, but yeah. Well, so this is basically cases where we now do the explicit swizzling for cases that are actually SLP, which we handled before by magic because it happened to not run into the situation and having used complex permute instructions. But now we're trying to support the permutation in a VLA agnostic way, even on the targets where it's not necessary. Um, and shoot ourselves in the foot, basically, and no longer support that specific SLP case, like for the size of six. Uh, six is really annoys me. Six, because six is almost power of two. Like five. <laughs> like? <laughs> um, so what is also missing, um, it's, it's sad, but, but it's, it's, it's the case. So currently when, when SLP, discovery, so we do SLP discovery, and everything that we didn't discover SLP, we are using the classic vectorization, and then we determine the unroll factor and everything, and now we are analyzing the SLP instances, whether we can actually vectorize them with the chosen vector, uh, vector size, and so on. And if that fails for any of the instances we discovered, we are basically saying, okay, try without SLP at all. Because we can't really, at that point, remove a single instance, because that changes data we computed already. It shouldn't be the case, but you know, it is there. So that's, that's how it works right now. So then we are doing without SLP. And there are quite some test cases that just rely on that, because, yeah, they rely on it. So, and uh, what I didn't yet implement is that when we run into this case, that we are then simply trying to vectorize everything with this single lane thing, because that would be the equivalent, uh, the equivalent to the previous behavior. And I think that, would, that will fix some of the fails we are currently seeing. So I said, I want to kind of do what we did before, not do too many changes at all at the same time. Because, of course, we should handle that better. Only do this single instance with the single lane if the others work, right? But one thing at a time. So, test suite status. Uh, so, I... I still say what you say. You should say that. So, uh, what did I do here? I created a patch that basically, when we at the final step, do the analysis of whether we can vectorize. If we run into any statement that's not in SLP instead, we say, no, we can't. So we fail, we hard fail, basically, at that point. Um, it's, it's not exactly the same, because there will, well, it should be, hopefully. It's, it's some number, right? Some number. Um, and I throw it on the, on the CI, because that gets me regressions. When I do testing with QEMO, I have, would have to compute a baseline, and uh, I, I use the CI. So on, on ARM64, there are 594 additional fails. On ARM, there's 207. Uh, I think ARM has almost no scan assembler test cases. Let's see. Out of 50,000? Yes, tens of thousands. Yeah, but I mean, it's a CI, it's supposed to be green. Right? So, 
Um, so ARM has almost no assembler test scan test cases for vectorization, or it's all green, so there are no assembler test fails for ARM. Well, they're not being vectorized before, so it's making it difficult. Or maybe they're vectorized fine, like on x86. Um, there are 718, you have to divide by two because I tested two multilips in this case. I, I grabbed out the equality, uh, but, but this is basically C, C++, so everything. And I think the CI doesn't test everything, every library, or I, I'm not sure. It's, I, I don't think those numbers are really comparable. Likewise, probably the ARM and RISC-5 ones are not comparable. Um, for, for the RISC V CI, I only looked at that multilip. It has a lot of lot more. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and I just grabbed the addition, the fail lines in what I got from GitHub, the lock thing. I, it, it it looked kind of okay. I tried to reproduce some of the fails, and it's I can reproduce them. Um, for RISC V. The, most of the fails are assembly test scan fails. I've analyzed some of those. Um, there are quite a bunch of test cases that fail because of this select VL thing. So basically how the vectorizer handles the vector length setting. So I, as far as I understand, either you, you tell the set VL, the configuration thing, I would like to use 267 lanes, and then it gets you back. No, 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 four. You get four. <laughs> you get four. And then you have to work on four. And basically, that's your, uh, the, the, your work set that you perform. And the other way is, well, tell me the vector lengths. And then compute out of that vector lengths and your constraints with minimum, maximum, or whatever. A vector lengths you are actually going to use. And that set uh, VL thing, so basically let the hardware decide, it's currently disabled for SLP because I think it's probably necessary because the hardware is stupid. Um, so because um, with SLP, you basically have some vectors where you have two lanes or three or four per iteration, but you have others where you only have two. So basically you have different vector lengths, or, and, 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 and your masks, you wouldn't need to like duplicate the masks. So I think the code is not there, and I'm also not sure if, like, if you say set vector lengths six, if it gets me always back a multiple of three, or if it can get me two, and then, then I'm lost with my three SLP lanes. I, I, it's not in the spec, at least I can't figure out what a hardware is allowed to do, so I guess it's allowed to do anything, like return one. Correct? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, this is just gonna be or, or, yeah. or like, well, with the set VL, you also specify the data size. Time, and you get back. Like, so, so it could be that also with a, a regular loop, when you have like ins and shorts, that you get to, would get two different vector lengths, which of course can't work because you can't unroll differently. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of very limited, but it seems to be, to, looking at the scan assembly thing, a useful optimization for a very narrow set of loops. And that's currently broken for SLP, but I know how to quirk it into doing the right thing, I think. And I hope that slashes thousand of the, those, maybe. Okay, I stand by my statement. Uh, I would rather you pull forward and leave that 2,500 to the rest of my guys and we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. figure that out. And if there's anything of significance, we'll contact you. Yeah, so I, I've, I've opened back for analyzed things, so I keep track of that. And uh, yeah, so, so for x86-64, it, it also looks a lot. There are also assembly test scan fails. Um, there is a bunch of generic test fails with regard to the six size, and there's a 10 and a eight and a 12, something like that. Yeah, yeah. You can do struct load 10, I think, with RISC-V. 
Probably can. Well, how, how, be really slow. how many vector registers have you, do you have? How many vector registers? Varies. Minimum 32, I think. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, so there's work to do. It's basically what it says. Um, so I want to repeat. Do I have time to repeat? Yes. Short, very short time to repeat uh, the main benefits. So only one way to implement a feature. It sounds great. Um, no more this strange hybrid thing, which probably still doesn't work in all cases. Um, no more doing this iteration, so try again without SLP. And maybe we, we didn't yet get to the point to cost the different things against each other. Um, uh, maybe also get a bet better heuristics when to use those uh, load lines and store line instructions and be able to mix them with regular SSLP and yeah, handle that kind of better. But, but not for the initial transform, I want to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so there are only also opportunities for the future. One major bad aspect of the vectorizer currently is, is how costing is done and how the costing is interfacing with the targets. And when you have as a P nodes, you basically have a graph and you have most vector instructions represented by a SLP node and you don't have to second guess how the vectorizer now implements this division that your hardware can't uh, implement, right? Um, so you could take into account data flow. That's, well, that, that's exactly what's useful. That's exactly what's useful, that's true. But it's, at the moment, it's, only, it's not really possible to do that in a good way. Uh, so it's, the opportunity is to redefine the interface of the costing to the target. Um, then there's the opportunity, as we have data flow, we can co-generate directly from the SLP representation. So currently we are copying the scalar loop and then replacing each scalar statement with the vector statement. And then we copy it again for the epilog and we are doing that again. So we don't have to copy the scalar loop, we can, in principle, directly generate the vector code. But it's, it's quite low hanging thing in theory, and, but, but the benefit is also not too big in the end, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's a nice thing that you can do that. Um, and when, you have, when you're doing SLP, you can in principle very easily generate code for not vectorized parts. So you have the single lane SLP and you say, well, your vector size is one. Yes, L4 has one lane. So you just duplicated the scalar code n times when you can't vectorize any of the statements. So Jakob said it's useful for OpenMP because OpenMP has a special pragma that can tell you you are not allowed to vectorize this statement, but all the rest, please. Um, and you can also do the, the, the opposite of vectorization. You can basically, people to, tend to write unrolled code because they think, well, it's fast. But in some cases, if, you, if the, the programmer unrolled eight times, but your vectors have only four lanes, you can re-roll the loop and only use four lanes. Or when you're optimizing for size, you can re-roll it completely uh, up to a single lane. So basically, we, it's, it should be more easy to support fractional vectorization factors. So now comes the scary slide, I think. I just chose a different color for the, for the scary <laughs> slide. <laughs> Timeline. So um, um, I, I really plan to transition to the only SLP mode, which means putting the hard fail in the, in the check uh, at the end of this stage one. At the end of stage one, because then we still have stage three to fix things. And yeah, it will fail vectorization when there's a statement that's not using SLP, right? So we are accepting at that point the scan assembly fails, maybe some more fails. And uh, I hope too that we and also the target maintainers old, uh, we, can, we can analyze the regressions, fix the test cases, see, oh, it's not important, we defer, or 
fix it. Yeah, but at least go through them and see if there's anything we don't yet know, because that's the, the interesting part. And I showed regressions for ARM, RISC V, and x86. There's also Power PC. No CI for Power PC, sorry. Um, then there's of course System Z, which also has some few very very few vector instructions. Probably not many test cases, so maybe nothing fails. Um, but it, it has it has a fixed vector size, so those ISAs are usually not very problematic. Right, then there's Itanium has some vector test. Then now we are getting to the sparks and stuff, yeah. Uh, Rainer already filed some bugs. The test cases are failing. So I'm, I'm not going to care about those. I hope the target maintainers will at least file a bug with an analysis, what goes wrong. And then we can, of course, work on it. Yeah. Well, there will be no, so I, so I won't file the bugs for the failing test cases. So I know you're posting PowerPC and System Z to results to GCC regression, right? But, uh, and, and some of you guys then file bugs for test cases that continue to fail. So I hope they will file the bugs, even if it's just many vectorizer test fails after revision. <laughs> X, Y, Z, right? We, we can split that back up then. And, um, but so, if it's that it's in a bad state, we can, at the moment, still easily roll back. We just disable the single lane discovery and be done. And, and remove the hard check, right? And then we get what we got before. And only uh, in next stage one, we should do things to remove code that's then no longer necessary. So that's, that's the plan. Basically, hard force the thing through because it didn't work the other two times I tried. <laughs> and three times the charm, something like that. Still awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, there's a very few things that needs to be fixing. At least I know only a very few of the very few things. I didn't look at all the assembly things. I, I looked at the, the generic fails and a few assembly scan fails. But most of the time I can't make sense of the SVE assembly or the RISC-V assembly, so. No, it's our architecture, we can't do that. <laughs> Given the magnitude of the RISC-V failures, the fact that the vast majority are uh, given the magnitude of risk five failures and the fact that the vast majority are assembly check failures, that to me really falls on the risk five maintainers. I don't think that should fall, be falling on you for this work. So, and I think that applies to the other architectures as well. So, questions? I think we still have even eight minutes left. And there's the vectorizer buff for which we need to switch rooms. Unfortunately, so it's downstairs. We are downstairs. Upstairs. <laughs> no, but but as is it as then it's supposed to be S ten, right? Uh, no, it's S five. Okay. The big one. Yeah, the big one. Okay. So, and in case you. Didn't notice I spoiled the end of stage one. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually wrote it in the. Yeah, I wrote it on the web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also wrote the end of stage three. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, two it's two months from now. It's, it's, it's around the same time as all the years before. Yeah. The it's easy for us to forget that that's only yeah, two months away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but usually we tell you only three weeks before. The first quote is not an exercise because you broke something else. <laughs> uh, what if code is no longer exercise because you broke something else? 
So no, it's because it's no longer necessary, right? It's basically all the duplication and the features that are just there because there are two data structures, right? It's, it's probably going to be a little bit disappointing, the amount of code we can actually remove. So the more interesting thing is to do then the follow-up cleanup of the code that results when you just remove the, the, the branches and box of code. But of course, so I, I would expect that this should be done in one step. So the, the cleanup of the surrounding code and the removal and not somebody just folding all uh, always false branches in the source because that will result in, in code that probably is harder to understand than if the both branches are still there. So it's probably going to take some time to do the code cleanup. Yeah, and, right. and it's always the case that when we do these code cleanups, we find things six months later. Yeah, and of course. That, that to me is fine yeah. and normal. So, so one extra data point, so we are tracking like spec performance on x86 and also on uh, ARM, but uh, on hardware without SVE. And I, I always looked when I did big changes and there is at least nothing obvious happening there, which is probably a good sign. Uh, but at least not related to your changes. At least not. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's probably a sign that uh, real world code is really simple and only exercises the very simple code paths. And the test cases are, of course, exercising all the weird stuff. And the weird stuff may eventually regress a bit. So I, I really don't expect Power Z to regress. I know Power will regress because probably nobody, nobody implemented the unaligned, optimized load thing for SLP. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 so I think these, these optimized load things are from times where the hardware didn't support unaligned loads, like the ulti original power for whatever Ultivec stuff. Yeah, so it's, maybe it's time to retire that code path instead of implementing it for SLP. But it's surely impossible to implement it. I mean, it's, so the, the, of course, the, the easy way out to implement something for SLP is just to implement the single lane SLP case, because that should be exactly the same, but with a different data structure. Implementing the full SLP support is sometimes harder, because for VLA vectors, you have to now synthesize constants with modern one lane, so it's not a, no longer a single, single series, but two, so you have to generate two and interleave them and use gather or something else. Yeah. Uh, might the single lane SLP eventually replace x86 backends STV, you mean scalar to vector passes? Or are, you, are they very different things? Um, that, that's an interesting question. But uh, the, the, so the, the X86 STV uh, pass basically implements operations that are operating on the general purpose register set on the vector re register set, but was in scalar form. Um, originally motivated, of course, by the fact that there are way more vector registers on X86 than general purpose registers which will be no longer true after the new Intel thing. But uh, yeah, and so it basically it tries to remove the transitions between GPR and vector. I don't think that's really topic of vectorization because, because no, it, it's, 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 I mean, on GIMPL, it's still a float it's still an integer operation, and I don't have a way to say it should live in the vector set. I mean, I could assign it a vector with size one, but I think we have had more problems with vector one lane modes than not. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Something's gonna blow up. But in principle, it's possible, but, uh, but costing is, of course, I mean, I, I know the STV pass does quite, it, it really tries to estimate 
on the instruction level, if it's profitable to perform the operation on the vector side, even including the possible moves that result. And that's, of course, quite impossible on Gimple. So I'm, I'm, I don't think, I think SCV is great. Maybe we should make it more generic and other targets could also benefit. But the costing is, of course, very x86 specific. And yeah. Slowly, we are out of time. So let's, let's move the, up <laughs> to the boss. Thank you.